Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be covering a feature of PyTest, which is a set of helper context managers that help you test uh, exceptions that are raised in your code. And uh, the function is PyTest raises, and I'm gonna show you an example uh, piece of software where I used it and you know how, how you might use it in your test. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the example that we're gonna use today comes from a bit of parsing code from uh, this library called setup CFG format. Uh, the idea behind setup CFG format is it auto formats your uh, package library metadata. But anyway, that's not important. Uh, what's important today is we're going to be looking at this min pi3 version argument, and it takes a Python version that must be two segments, so not three and not one. And those other lengths of segments will be errors. So uh, let's let's build a function for that. Okay, so I'm going to open up a Python file. We're also going to open up Actually, I'll just write the test in line. That'll be the easiest way to do this. Virtual VMV. And we're going to pip install pytest. That's what we're going to use to test this. And we're going to make a function called dev parse version. And it's going to take a string. And it is going to return a tuple of int int. So a two length tuple. I'm typing import tuple. And if we were to write some tests for this, I would separate the positive tests from the negative tests. I find that if you try and do both of them at the same time, you end up with really unmaintainable parameterize and you know a bunch of complicated stuff, and it makes your tests harder to read. So I like to have a you know test parse version and then a def test parse version failure. Um, so I will test both of the scenarios here, and we're going to use pytest.mark.parameterize. I did a video on parameterize, so I'll link that in the description. And so we'll do input s and expected as our two parameterized variables here. And let's say, you know, 3.6 is supposed to map to 3, 6. Uh, that might be one of our examples. Or, you know, 2.7 might map to 2.7. And we might want some other special case here. So like 3.10 has to parse to 3.10 as well. And input s expected, and uh, we will do assert parse version input s is equal to expected. And again, we're doing a little bit of test driven development here because I haven't done the actual implementation here. Granted, I'm writing a lot of the tests first, and usually with TDD, you switch back and forth, um, but I, I, you know loosely test driven development. I did a video on test driven development. I will try and remember to link that one in the description, though I'm probably gonna forget that one. <laughs> um, and then for the failures, um, we'll actually look at testing these in a second, but um, let's get just the base case working for now, and then we'll show the failure cases and then try and implement the failure cases as part of this parse version. Um, so if we run this right now, you'll see that we have, well, more failing tests than I expected. Normally I would put these Normally I would put the test in a separate file, so I'm actually going to import pytest down here. You can imagine that this is t underscore test.py, but for the sake of the video, it's much easier to just do it like this. Anyway, we have our three failing tests because we have no implementation here, so it's just returning none, and so the tests are failing. If we go to implement this, we can implement this as tuple int uh, part for part in s dot split dot. However, this doesn't completely implement our test case. We need to actually have some error cases because this, um, you know, doesn't handle some stuff correctly. Uh, so let's talk about the two different error cases here. The, the, er the first error case that we would handle here is if these aren't numbers, and you know, we should expect to get some sort of error out of here. I believe in Python, int of not a number is going to give you value error. So we want to, you know, allow this to just re-raise out a value error. So let's do test parse version not a number. So maybe we have um, parse version 3.a. And the way I used to write this before I knew about the better way to do this is I would do this, accept value error as e, and then uh, you know assert e. And if it didn't raise, we should raise assertion error expected to raise value error. And I actually see this pattern a lot in code still uh, for those that don't understand how the uh, raises helpers work. Um, and this does, you know, this will 
properly test that this happens and this code will run on, you know, if this didn't raise a value error. So like if we change this to 3.6, for instance, you'll see that we get, you know, expected to raise value error, but it didn't. But writing this over and over is pretty tedious and uh, there's a much easier way to write this and PyTest provides a helper for this. There's also helpers for this in other test frameworks. So look for a like assert raises or something like that in whatever test framework you're working with. Uh, and in PyTest, it's with pytest.raises and you give the exception type here, value error. Um, and that's just a context manager. We can delete all this extra code, which is kind of nice. And you can see that this validates that. And if we didn't raise the proper error, so if this did parse successfully, you'll see that we get a failure here, did not raise value error. So it tells you exactly what went wrong and uh, why, why you should have changed that there. Um, I'm going to show you a second example here where we're going to raise our own custom error and then check the message of that because that's often useful. I, I always kind of as a rule of thumb, if I'm going to raise an exception, that has a user facing message, I'm gonna test the user facing message just because you know it was it was important enough for me to raise the exception, I might as well check it in my tests. Um, but let's do wrong segment count. So part of our spec for this was actually that it has to be length two. And right now we're actually failing that. Um, but we're gonna make our, you know, uh, in, in the actual example, it uses argument type error, which is an exception for arg parse. Uh, but we're gonna make our own uh, version error class here. And I'm gonna extend value error just because uh, that seems like the thing to do here. I don't actually need any specialization for my exception, so I'm just extending it directly. I'm mostly doing this so that I have a unique type. And so we'll use with pytest.raises, raises version error. And we're gonna call parse version on uh, 1.2.3. And actually, we are gonna test a couple of cases here. So let's parameterize. Parameterize. Uh, S and oh, this will fit on one line, so we'll just do it up here. So there's a couple of cases that we want here. One is for only one segment and one is for too many segments. So we will test both of those scenarios here. Oh, I forgot a currency here and I have too many there. And so we will pass in S here. So we, we expect to see a version error here, but we don't have one yet. As you'll see, we, um, you know, fail to do that here. So what we can do here is say that uh, ret equals this and then assert, well, if len ret does not equal to raise version error, return ret, um, and this will actually, you know, oops, error, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> You'll see we now pass this test. However, this is not going to be all that useful to an end user. There's actually no message in this exception. And so when it crashes here, uh, it doesn't give them any useful information. So what I actually want to do here is capture the exception information from this context. Now, this object isn't valid until after this with block has exited. So if you try and do anything with it before then, you kind of, you know, are in undefined territory. Uh, but after this with block, so dedented one, we can write assertions based on this. And almost all of mine look like this. Uh, e dot except exception info dot value dot args, where I unpack the message from the arguments. Um, I actually did a video on this trailer comma assignment, so I'll, I'll link that as well. Uh, but since there's only gonna be one argument here, we'll pull that one out. And let's assert that it's a helpful user message. So we'll assert message is equal to um, expected this dot this, but got s bang r. Now, usually I wouldn't uh, do any formatting in my test, and I would, you know, probably write this out. Actually, let's do the best the the best case or the best practice here. That way, we're not doing any logic in our test. The problem with doing logic in your tests is you tend to uh, start re-implementing the actual function itself, and we want to actually make sure that this is working and not, you know, and not just our, because you could write the bug in both places and then you wouldn't actually have anything. So expected uh, this dot this, but got three. So that's one of our error messages. And this for this one, expected this dot this, but got 3.6.0. And so that way we're not actually, uh, that way we're not duplicating that logic or <laughs> avoiding that logic. Anyway, 
uh, expected message. So if we run this now, we should have two failing tests. Uh, we actually get a value error because we didn't pass any arguments into our exception. So that's the first thing to fix uh, from a TDD perspective. Uh, so if we just put error in here, again, we don't have the right thing, uh, but it'll tell us like we didn't pass the right error message here. So let's actually implement this. Expected this, this, but got uh, S bang R. And so now we should have passing tests. But anyway, that's how you can test exceptions. These are the basically the two patterns that I use, like, you know, test the message or don't test the message. <laughs> um, I guess one other thing to point out is if you need to capture two possible exceptions at once, you can use a tuple of exceptions, very similar to how uh, the accept block actually works. So you could put, you know, this might raise value error or version error, uh, but we don't actually know which one, and um, you know, it, it'll it'll pass that. Uh, but I find it's usually best to just have one very specific exception. I guess one other like worst practice here. Uh, don't use like blank exception here uh, because it will often capture things that you don't expect. Um, so for instance, if I did, you know, I accidentally did a zero division here somehow, or I don't know, an attributor is probably a better example. So like if I did this and, you know, caught exception here, this test actually isn't testing anything because I made a programming error here. Uh, but it silently passes for the wrong reason. So this is raising type error, which is not at all, you know, what we expected to test here. Now, granted, your type checker can usually catch this better than you. Um, but yeah, don't use don't use exception as the exception type here, or base exception for that matter. So always prefer a very very specific type. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.